Okay, so quick update. I'll tell you what I did wrong. I left the campsite with the electric element on. didn't think about it uh, went ahead and pulled the power it, everything's fine had water in the water heater uh, everything's nothing's wrong with anything so I get home and not thinking go ahead and hook the shore power up to the camper so we can keep the battery running charged and everything and I decided to go ahead and drain the water heater and well, lo and behold, three hours later, I decided to go in the camper and realize the switch to the element is on. So I don't know if I burn it up yet. Uh, we're going to find out. And I'll show you a quick way to test it uh, to see if the element is burnt out if you ever do it yourself. Uh, hopefully, if we get lucky, the element won't be burnt out, but I got a pretty good idea it will be. Um, but uh, we'll show you how to do that. Uh, if it is burnout, uh, we'll show you how to replace that as well. So we'll get a couple of tools together and bust in this thing and see what we're doing. So got a couple of tools out. Uh, I'll show you what I use. Uh, first, I use my multimeter. Uh, the multimeter I use does have a... a uh, today junior <laughs> ohm uh, alarm on it so it, it'll be all right guys just a quick jump on this um, I know I was saying uh, ohms and ohm alarms and I'll be saying it through the video uh, it's a continuity alarm uh, it measures in ohms so that's why I always say ohms. Uh, some people say it different, but it's basically a continuity uh, test uh, to see if there is able for power to travel through from one end to the next. Uh, so that's where that's where you'll get this part. Be able to check the current that flows through it. So if the element is solid, then you'll hear well. you'll hear that the tone go off if you don't hear a tone go off you don't see any any uh, ohms on it then you know that it is a bad element uh, so a couple suggestions always get you a good multimeter uh, this is a little craftsman I bought a long time ago and it's been very useful to me um, if you haven't done electronics uh, if you don't feel safe about doing it then I recommend you taking it to a dealership uh, if you do any kind of maintenance like me I've, I've been doing maintenance for over 30 years on apartments so I'm able to know what I'm doing on this another tool that's going to come in handy on your campers are these Klein uh, I get the 11 in 1 uh, it's got 11 different features in this thing and uh, I, all the electronics and electrical work and uh, maintenance work and whatever i've used these screwdrivers more than i ever have any other screwdriver or nut driver alive uh, so this this is a good buy it's a little pricey but you get what you pay for so we'll break this thing apart and uh, i'll show you what i'm gonna do as far as testing it to see if the element is any good uh, these uh, what we have here is a Domanic uh, water heater. It's electric and gas. Uh, I'm not sure on suburban locations are going to be different. Uh, I, I'm not sure if Domanic has different locations on everything that they have inside. However, this is a Domanic on ours, and I love this because Domanic makes it easier than most other water heaters to access any parts and 
uh, to get to everything so and you'll see when we get inside uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is uh, you know everybody has the little wasp covers to cover over all your vents uh, however if we put a cover over this the way the door is designed I would have to take it off every time I to open the door to the water heater so what I did is I bought the screen the metal screen and uh, I, what I did is I formed it to go inside here so I, I formed it around the entire area and bent it around the structures here so it'll hold it in place so I can open the lid and close it anytime I want and still have that protection from the wasp getting inside uh, so don't have to worry about that so quick oh one other thing I don't know if I've covered this or not uh, also it's the valve that we put on so, so our Domenic doesn't have a anode rod we don't have to have one uh, and that was great for me uh, so what they come with is a plastic cap uh, on the water heater and and me I'm, I'm not big on getting water pushed all up inside of here so you know you know as well as I do once you pop that cap off this area right here floods up with water to me I would think it would be a water intrusion into the camper so what I did is I came up with a, a ball valve this is a gas ball valve uh, and what I do is uh, I've got this pipe here I've, I've made uh, it's got the brass half inch nipple here uh, and what it'll do is just screws on here to the end and then I got a little hose, little piece of hose right there, uh, and it brings it out from the camper far enough. And then whenever I want to drain the water, I just open the valve, and it'll push any pressure in it off. And then I just open that up, and it'll it'll drain the entire water heater. So that's how I drain my water heater the safest way, and also the best way I see where you're not getting water inside your camper. Um, so if you're able to do that. You know, I highly recommend on doing that. Uh, I think it cost me maybe 15, 20 bucks for everything. Uh, so, but if you've got anode rods, you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, so, make sure you know what you're uh, doing on these water heaters if you ever go to put a valve on here. Uh, to me, I would think every manufacturer would do something like this for the convenience and the safety of. The people owning the campers uh, but I mean they don't I haven't seen any yet well I think Winnebago has one that it's a flap that folds down and a valve that opens or something like that I, not every water heater has it I, I would wish that Suburban and Domenic and, and, and all those manufacturers that make these water heaters would do something to this effect to where you don't have to worry about water getting inside the camper and you don't have to worry about getting uh, burn on anything. But as you can see, everything is easy to get to. Uh, the maintenance on these Domenics are, are extremely easy. Uh, I know Suburban, uh, the Suburban I saw, the element, uh, electrical element is behind this gas line. So you have to remove all this to get back in here. Well, actually it's on this side. Um, but you have to remove everything to, you know, be able to get to the element, uh, which Domenic made it easier. They put the element behind here. So you've got your gas here and then your electrical elements right here. So I, I think that's always great right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this cover off. Uh, be careful on these covers because they have um, a um, watertight seal. So make sure that when you peel these covers off that you keep the seal intact uh, because you want to get this back on so no water gets back into that area and winds up uh, messing up any electrical components behind here. Uh, big thing here, and I've already done this, uh, make sure you uh, either unhook your shore power or turn the breaker off. Uh, here at the house, I've, I've got everything on a 50 amp breaker. So I've already flipped the breaker off uh, and, and we'll test it to make sure uh, that everything, always test, even, even if you cut a breaker off, always test it before you put your hands on any electrical. Uh, because 
you never know especially when you're at certain campsites and their labeling might be wrong uh, you don't want to grab a hot wire uh, so we'll take the uh, take the screws off of here using our little nut driver on here um, zip that off right quick Try not to lose your screws. I've got a gravel driveway I keep the camper on, so that's always uh, my fun and games when I drop a screw inside gravel. All right, so pop this cover off. And there's the weather stripping I was talking about. Make sure that stays intact because you're gonna need to make sure you put that back on. So now you can see the uh, access here we're going to test this to make sure that the power is completely off so the way you're going to test it is you're going to put it on voltage uh, I it's a one uh, one well I guess 120 uh, on voltage but uh, I always like to put mine on 600 volts it'll still read it and, and if there is any high voltage off of it it'll still pick it up it won't uh, deaden itself out so what I'll do is I'll come in and I will touch the ground on one side and then the lead to one of the elements on the other side to make sure that we're completely grounded off. So the ground on this is going to be our green wire. Uh, so I'll, I'll put my black tester up to the green wire where it's connected to the water heater and then I'll Put it on one side of the element and it's showing zero on both. Pop it on both just to give it a once over. All right, so everything looks good. All right, so uh, we're gonna, what we're gonna do to test the ohms on this is we're gonna take the wires off of the element, off of both sides. Um, and Get my handy dandy trusty screwdriver as soon as I can find the bit and if you're like me you put everything in 20 different pockets so you having to go through all your pockets to find what you need Got it in my back pocket. See, I told you. Uh, all right. So, what we're gonna do here is gonna back these screws out. I always put ever if it's on bottom or top. I always keep my wires ever how they're supposed to lay, so I don't confuse myself later. Even if I have to walk away and come back to it, I'll at least know uh, that my black's going to be on the hot side on the opposite side and uh, the white will be on the low end on the right side. Uh, so now we got this together, we'll pop it up and drop the tester down to the ohm rating where the alarm is. So we'll know, uh, and I, I guess it's the ohm rating. I never really was technical on these. Uh, uh, multimeters as far as the technical verbiage on it but to me it's a it's an ohm rating uh, but test it make sure you got the alarm put it on both ends oh that's a good sign it means I didn't burn the element out thank God so I don't have to worry about replacing the element uh, thank God I'm, I'm so glad for that um, so that's one good thing about having these uh, multimeters. Uh, it just makes life so much easier and you don't have to worry about pulling something off just to discover that you, you don't have to. You know. uh, it, it's a good preventative maintenance, more, more or less. 
Uh, but if we ever had to replace this, uh, then all we would have to do is uh, take the wires back out, you know, make sure that the water heater is completely drained uh, because you don't want to undo these things and there'll be hot water behind that and it wind up uh, burning your hands up pretty good uh, because that, that water is extremely hot, which you already know. Um, so we'll go ahead and get our wire connections back on. And okay. So what we would do is if we had to replace this, uh, we would have to get the socket uh, that's made for the water heaters. And it's usually like, I think, an inch and a quarter, inch and eight, something like that. Uh, but you would get that and you just unscrew it. It screws out and then pulls all the way out. Um, they, they run various sizes. I think there's two or three different sizes on these elements. Uh, but you'll get the new element, uh, pop it in, just screw it in and tighten it down real good. Uh, you don't have to go extremely high torque on it. Uh, you know, you just want to hand tighten it down real good so it's good and firm. Uh, and then connect your wires back together. Fill it up with water, make sure you don't have any leaks, uh, and then uh, put power on it. Uh, one thing that uh, when you're doing these water heaters, uh, when you go to fill it up with water, uh, the best thing I like about these valves is um, if we've got air in the lines uh, where we've drained it down and when we first start up, we'll, you know, we'll put water on the unit. Uh, I always cut this valve on and try to blow, you know, it'll shoot the water out, of course, being it's on the low end, but it'll also blow a lot of the air too as well. Uh, so I'll open that up for a second, let it blow as much air out as I can there. Then I'll pop the release valve and I'll let a lot of that air pull out of here. Uh, so it's not water hammering any of the fixtures inside the camper. Uh, try to get as much of the air out of this thing as you can and then go inside. Uh, I always like to run it in the bathroom because the bathroom faucet's always solid. It's not a tall neck. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it water hammering and shifting it around. Uh, kitchen faucet, if you do it in there, just hold the neck so you don't water hammer the neck on the uh, on on your kitchen faucet and and damage that uh, but make sure you get all the air completely out of the system and and then cut the uh, gas on or the electric on to the water heater because uh, you don't want any air getting to this because if, if air gets to this and and uh, that element tries to ignite it'll it'll burn it out real quick so I hope for this, uh, we're going to put everything back together. I hope, uh, you know, I hope everything was uh, beneficial to you guys. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you have any suggestions of any easier ways to do things, uh, you know, as far as this, uh, let me know. Let me know if you've had any experiences like I did and uh, the outcome of that. You know, if you got lucky and your element wasn't burnt out. Uh, it, it's, it's possible Dominic might have put some kind of a safety switch on it. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say yes or no to, to that because I don't know the way they function and everything. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed it.